For those who don't know me, I'm Cecilia Griego. I'm with the City of Bakersfield's um, Economic and Community Development Department. I've been kind of the, I, I, I kind of dropped the word lead or project manager. I'm more of the, of the guidance person because <laughs> it really has been um, really getting all of us together and really coming up with some really great projects um, that I think you will see that we've really built a really great collaborative. So next, I'm just gonna do some quick brief things about TCC um, for those that don't know about it. Oops, too far. There we go. Basically, hopefully you can read that. Um, basically, you know, it's established um, by the state legislature to fund the development and implementation of neighborhood level transportive climate community plans that include multiple kind of coordinated greenhouse gas emission reduction projects that provide uh, local um, economic, environmental, and health benefits to disadvantaged communities. Um, really, it's about, it's funded by um, cap and trade dollars, and it's really about kind of uh, furthering the state's goals um, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, you know, deliver economic, environmental benefits to these disadvantaged communities. So, next. This is our uh, project area. So it's roughly, you know, our core downtown up to about 30, I think, 8th Street. Um, it's a southern portion of Old Town Kern and then a large portion of the Southeast Bakersfield community. Um, one thing you know that, you know, it really isn't, is, this program isn't about, you know, a city project, it is about a, a collaborative. So this is the collaborative structure that we have put together. Um, one of the things, um, so you can see, we have a community steering committee, a leadership council, and then some focused working groups. And this is all part of our partnership agreement. Um, one thing a collaborative needs is a name. I'm kind of tired of calling it TCC. So um, if anybody has some inspirational names, I have um, some sheets of paper here. There's some that we got from a meeting last night. So I went ahead and added those. And then so if you like those, you can put a star next to it or you can add your own ideas for a community name or a collaborative name, I should say. Oops. Um, once the key things that this collaborative does is we work with those three goals of the program, which is, you know, reducing our gas, community benefits, and economic um, prosperity. And under those three um, goals, you pick um, strategies. So I'll identify those strategies in the next slide, and then each project is supposed to be associated with the TCC strategy. And then in addition to that, there's transformative elements that include community engagement, uh, displacement avoidance, workforce development, data collection, and climate adaptation and resiliency. These are the strategies that our projects that are, we're going to hear from today. Um, so we have um, equitable housing, neighborhood development, transit access and mobility, solar installation, energy efficiency and appliance electrification, uh, urban greening and green infrastructure, community microgrids, and brownfield redevelopment. Um, just some some budgeting parameters, just because this is, we're calling it kind of a participatory budget process because we are going to hear about their projects, we're going to see their budgets, and we're going to get, this is just kind of a basic understanding of what we need to happen um, when we submit our application. So, you know, it's a $35 million funding ask, that's the maximum. When we apply, we need three projects that are both ready and quantifiable. What they mean by quantifiable is we have, we've calculated those greenhouse gas reduction measures. Um, of those three projects, they must account for at least 50% of our funding ask. Um, if uh, the rest of the projects then must meet readiness within a year of the pr after we get, if we get awarded the funding. Um, we also must uh, add additional leverage projects, and this leverage can be as part of the projects that you hear before. In some of these projects, you'll see those, le those leverage budgets. Or we can have what they call standalone leverage projects, where it's projects that are also contributing to the community benefits and the neighborhood, um, but they, don't, they aren't asking for TCC funding. 
obviously these projects also must support the implementation of, of our project and the, the TCC strategies and objectives. And it must be um, specific when also these projects also must be within our, our project area. Um, overall, all uh, projects must be completed within five years. Um, in addition to the projects, um, we also had need to fund some of these transformative elements. So those things I mentioned earlier, uh, we are required to have 3% of our ask go towards uh, data collection and indicator tracking. That just shows the importance of it. They really want to see those, um, those um, outcomes measured. Um, we also can add um, time towards community engagement and just with avoidance. They do want to see the community continue engaged throughout those five years. Also towards a workforce development and economic opportunities. Um, we are currently working on our draft uh, transformative plans and those will be posted on our project website when they're completed, which is at bakersfieldtcc.us. Um, so this will basically be our, our, this is our first step of our participatory budgeting process. Um, you'll be asked, um, you'll be part of picking priority projects for our proposal. So you'll be asked to rank your three top projects. Um, voting will take place both Thursday and Friday. Um, we have various locations. We'll have um, voting at all day at our, at City Hall North, at the EDC department, which is on the third floor from eight to five. Um, we're also going to offer evening voting for those who can't come during the workday um, back here at MLK Center from 6 to 7.30. And then we're also having another site just on the Friday at the 10th at the Bakersfield Senior Center from 12 p.m. to 4.30. So these are areas that people can come and vote. And I have that information on a flyer there, too. Oops. All right, now we're just ready to hear about our projects. So the first ones we're going to hear from are um, our housing projects. So we have the Bakersfield uh, Senior Center and then also um, Habitat for Humanity. So if they want to join me up here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I think the Senior Center is first if you want to hold oh, up. Lily's always first. Let's just say that, right? Let's just say that. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Lily Parker. I'm with Bakersfield Senior Center. I'm the executive director there. And our project is actually Transform Together 4th Street. And as you can see, um, we're doing affordable senior housing, uh, senior facility, mobility, and active transportation, and an extension of Mill Creek Linear Park. Our facility um, that we're looking at will be a mixed use, which will house uh, apartments as well as our facility. The apartments um, are actually affordable housing, 18 units on our third floor and 18 on our fourth floor. The first two floors is, our, is designed basically to house the senior center and its numerous activities. Uh, our total budget is there, our total TCC dollars and our leverage, we're looking at 29 million at this time. And my partners are the Kern County Housing Authority and Bike Bakersfield. And the benefits of this particular project, it increases the supply of affordable places for seniors to live, near stores, transit, church, and part-time jobs. Also, it does reduce greenhouse gas emissions because it helps build uh, healthier communities and it helps protect the environment as well as seniors because we do need, I said we, me. Okay, I'm, I'm a senior too. We do need to be protected as well. Go ahead, Cecilia. Um, we will also have uh, in our project, uh, we'll provide electric vehicle 
charging station and our seniors will be able to share them as well. Uh, if they want to do on demand with them, they can end up doing that, but ride sharing is ideal. And of course, our goal is to also request the Mill Creek extension, make it something that's walkable and very mobile. Because you may not know this yet, but as you age, you need to keep it moving and things in motion. So um, what we're achieving or fulfilling in this is the reduction of personal vehicle use because we're going electric. We're also improving the public health and environmental benefits by increasing the supply of affordable places to live for our seniors. And there's some statistics, but I'm not going to go through that. And expand economic opportunity and shared prosperity by integrating affordable homes and sustainable transportation. If you're not aware, I have my current facility, we're uh, next door to our se senior housing, and it is full to capacity. They have a waiting list. St. John Manor is a block away. They also have a waiting list. So the point is affordable housing, the need for housing is necessary at this time. Thank you. Oh, okay. You can clap, I'm okay with that. And I do have um, some poster boards with some schematic site plans, conceptual, uh, plans as well, which will show you uh, the concept that we have in mind for our seniors if you'd like to visit over there. Thank you. Awesome. Come on, can you? I'm going to keep it moving, okay, so just so you know. Okay, thank you. I want to say that it's a little unfair that I have to follow MVP Lily Parker, but I'm going to do my best. How much time do I have? If you put me in a gym, you may not get the microphone back. I'm just going to let you know that right now. Hello, everyone. Oh, five minutes? Okay, then I'll only take six. All right, so my name's Ron White. I'm the executive director of Habitat for Humanity. In the audience there is Rebecca Robinson. She is a boots on the ground, technical advisor, and construction man. So I know there's a, a lot of uh, presentations tonight, so I'm going to try to give you an o a high-level overview of what we're looking at. So when you look at the title of this slide, Habitat for Humanity, Golden Empire, Rock the Block. The whole concept in terms of a high-level overview is that we come into a neighborhood, and I want to point this out to you before we get into stats and a lot of things that may not have immediate value. Just in Ward 1, prior to redistricting, we identified over 700, this is Ward 1, 700 infill lots that are simply not being utilized. So the, the concept here for us is we want to come in and not build one dwelling, not address one house, and if you know anything about Habitat for Humanity, we typically build single family dwellings. We know that we're facing historical shortages of inventory, so we want to come in and take a look at ADU model, single family dwelling model, duplex, and fourplex. Our partners in this process, based on funding, is the City of Bakersfield and Lifestyle Solar. Uh, project address, and if you look up here, it's a bit blurry. We've identified, just for readiness, three of those 700 within that district mapping that would allow us to come in and rebuild neighborhoods through a fourplex complex. Uh, quantity, uh, and it would be based on the footprint of each individual lot, we're looking at three fourplexes, which would carve out to about 20, uh, excuse me, 12 individual units, um, supporting multiple families. Concentrated critical home repair and preservation. Let me stop there for a minute. Our model is a little bit different. We don't just want to build homes, we want to build neighborhoods. So when we're building in a neighborhood, we know oftentimes, nicest house on the block, brand new construction, but what about the other houses in the neighborhood that need critical home repair? Two categories jump off the page to me. The uh, aging in place population, thank you Lily Parker, that I can tell you is underserved. The veterans community that's underserved. So we want to make that an area of focus, and if we can move on to the, oh, let me go to the budget. So budget breaks down, and of course, this is, this is a, a non-detailed, high-level budget, uh, when you, and it's a little bit blurry there. So our ask 
our ask total amount is 1,115 split in half in terms of the uh, TCC requirement. Uh, the leverage funding would come from the city of Bakersfield based on available funding. Please move forward. Uh, benefits. So when we talk about measurable outcomes, people are not statistics. But I had to list these there for the slide. So parental home ownership in low income neighborhoods has a positive impact on high school graduation. Revitalized neighborhoods create a sense of pride and investment while hoping to reduce crime and blight. And this is really the focal point of the presentation. Utilizing existing, and I want to say this again, existing untapped infill, infill inventory in traditionally underserved communities addresses the overwhelming need for long-term affordable housing. We have not seen this lack of inventory in terms of available housing since the 1940s. The occupancy rate in Kern County right now, as we sit here today, less than 2%. Less than 2%. Please move forward. Objectives and vision. You look at the, the gentleman to the right. They're part of our Habitat team. How we can come in and carve out this projection is because we leverage volunteer services, in-kind donations, which is the equivalent to uh, manpower and materials. So you take a look at the vision, provide long-term affordable housing for traditionally underserved communities of need creates opportunity for upward mobility, generational equity, and wealth. I, I appreciate that we're building rental properties because there's such a need, but the difference between rental and home ownership is you're building generational equity. You're not paying somebody else's rent, just to put it in layman's terms. Uh, the project launches a series of concentrated new construction builds in neighborhoods of need while meeting all California Title 24 solar and energy conservation requirements, EV stations and garages, as you would expect. Um, it provides, what I like about this project, and I'll wrap it up, it provides a collaboration, not just with Habitat, with the very neighborhood that the house is gonna be in, leveraging dollars, historical dollars, whether it's ARPA or money that's brought in from the city, it leverages municipalities, neighborhoods, multiple nonprofits to get the job done. Uh, please, final slide, unless we have one more. Oh, that is it. I think they're giving me the hook. Thank you for your time. Oh, you have something? Oh, we have a home that will be available at 230 Rodman. If you'd like to see me afterwards, we want to put a family in that home. Thank you. I do not have a graphic there, but thank you for your time. Um, next we'll have Get, but before that, I wanted to um, invite Pritika from Cap. No? You want to do it now? You don't, oh, you want me to do it? Is Sean here? He's on here. I was supposed to say sorry. I don't know. You want, I can do it. Yeah, I mean, I can introduce it. Okay. So, in an effort to kind of keep up to the yeah. If we do have any questions, can we rephrase? That way I can interpret. Okay. Um, so, we had an opportunity to work with Cecilia and her team on a couple of projects, some that are not as far along as the presenters before me, uh, but we still think it's a great way to um, connect a partnership. And so we started working a couple of weeks ago with um, Sean Battle with Hope Now, as well as Raji uh, from Grimway uh, Family Education Foundation on an effort to take a look at two parcels of land um, in Southeast Bakersfield and bring in a community garden. So um, just hot off the press, yesterday we submitted a grant opportunity uh, to Feeding America that speaks directly um, on kind of bringing resources at the ground level around uh, vegetation and farming. Um, and so this project in particular was a really great fit. So that's our most recent um, uh, project. There's a couple, but they're still in the very early conceptual phase. So I'm not sure if we'll be making it as part of this TCC round. Is that kind of, yes. Yeah. It's the same garden that was part of the MLK Community Collaborative Garden, um, but luckily, um, you know, we just had CAPK Welcome just kind of joined into that collaboration and it just shows and they found that grant opportunity. So even though we couldn't get it into our TCC project, we're still making, you know, lots of community projects happen. So I want to invite Ricardo from GET to talk about their project. Hello, hello everyone. Buenas tardes. My name is Ricardo Perez. I am the transit planner at Golden and Fire Transit District, and we're proposing four projects as part of the TCC application this year. 
uh, over all the four projects that are submitted, um, achieve the following, or try to achieve the following. Uh, significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions by implementing new and enhanced services that would increase ridership. Increased ridership would mean less cars on the road, which then would mean environmental benefits for us. Uh, and it would be an alternative method of transportation for the community. And then finally, expanding the reach of our transit services would mean more economic opportunity for more people in the area. Next slide. The first uh, project we're proposing is the TCC Downtown Connector. Essentially what this does, it modifies an existing route, um, Route 46, that travels on 4th Street and goes directly to downtown. So connecting the residents in the TCC and surrounding areas to the downtown transit center, and then where they can connect to the remainder of the network and go about their way. Uh, it's a modification of exactly two miles on Route 46. We uh, would like to install bus shelters to protect riders from inclement weather, um, improve inf general infrastructure from curb cuts for wheelchairs and um, you know, gutters for the, for the storms. Uh, the total funding asked for this is $3.3 million. That covers a two-year operating cost for the service, as well as the installation and purchase of the shelters. Uh, next slide. The second, or the benefits here, uh, mo we would modify the schedules so that ridership would be increasing. We would have a schedule that is attractive, that connects people directly to downtown and to other services. Um, we would improve the travel to the downtown area. We again install those amenities that protect from the environment, and then also this in improves the mobility access for the pedestrians in the area. The next uh, project we're proposing is the TCC Downtown OTK Circulator. We've uh, considered establishing a new route in the downtown area to serve Old Town Kern and downtown, and we think that this is the best opportunity to do so. That circulator route would operate every 15 minutes, Monday through Friday. We'd have a consistent, um, steady, steady flow of passengers, of workers in the downtown area, or folks using the, uh, the GET system, to you know, many trip generators that are on there, famous places that we know, uh, Noriega's, Wool Growers, Federal Courthouse, all those good locations. The funding asked for this is 2.7 million. Again, that includes a two-year operating budget for us. Um, we feel that this would be a successful program, so we wanted, wanted to include it in the TCC project. Next slide covers the benefits and impacts of this. Again, it increases transit mode connectivity. A shuttle bus that we have here in this area would mean more ridership for, for us, less cars on the road. Um, energy reduction, we would use zero emission bus. Uh, GET is converting its fleet to hydrogen fuel cell, so we would be using a fuel cell similar to that to have zero emission vehicles out on the road, and again, the operating schedule that we would have there would benefit workers and visitors in the downtown area um, alike. Next slide. The third project is our microtransit augmentation. Uh, microtransit is a novel concept, a pretty novel concept for uh, the transit system. If you picture Uber and Lyft, where you request a ride on your phone or call a number, for example, it's that type of service that we have. It's not a service that operates on a fixed schedule, so um, this is based on demand and when you need it, and it takes you to anywhere you want to go within the zone. So for this particular piece of the project, we're increasing the existing microtransit boundaries by 13 miles. It covers, most, or it covers all of the TCC area and most of Southeast Bakersfield, so it's a pretty sizable expansion there. Uh, the funding asked for this is $1.2 million, again, to cover the operating costs for the two-year period that we'd like to explore this, and then also, you know, promotional and enticing uh, new customers or attracting new customers to use this service as well. Next slide. Um, as part of this project, we'd like to offer free or reduced uh, rides or trips on the microtransits to entice them or attract them to try transit, to leave their cars at home and try a, a public service. These service improvements are also likely to increase ridership as well. We see with our existing microtransit that passengers are using the microtransit system to get to the fixed route system and work symbiotically there. So we feel that expanding the reach of that microtransit would then have you know, a domino effect on the rest of the system and increase the ridership there, which then would mean less greenhouse gas emissions and better environment. Next slide. 
The last one, the most important one, I think, is the Downtown Transit Center Revitalization Project. I think our current transit center was built sometime in the 80s, early 90s, so it's been a while that we've kind of addressed that landscape there. So as part of this project, we'd like to improve that in order for us to improve the quality of service for all. So the funding ask for this is $3.8 million. We're leveraging approximately 500000 in um, staff time and previous projects that we've worked on. Um, for a total of 4.3 million funding project. This is a pretty big project to take on, but we think that it's a uh, right opportunity to have that renovation of our downtown transit center. And the next slide talks about the benefits of that. As I mentioned, uh, a more attractive, eco-friendly atmosphere at the downtown transit center would likely bring or attract more passengers to our transit modes. It would increase transit mode share. Currently, this is the center is designed for um, big 40-foot buses, so a renovation of this would in possibly include microtransit smaller vehicles. Uh, we would be enhancing the shared use corridors, so everyone knows Chester Avenue is predominantly for vehicles. Um, it, for automobiles, with this renovation, we can have you know the infrastructure set up to accommodate those big buses. And then lastly, um, we can also include bike share or bike locker programs, bike share programs, and all that good stuff as well as part of this project. So that really summarizes it all. So I think we're going to do questions at the end, right? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if I mentioned. Were there any questions at the end? Is that okay? Okay. That way. So write them down. Um, next, we have our active transportation urban greening, and this includes bike bakers. Is Ashley here? Mm -hmm. I, I guess I can do it first for her. Um, and then um, yeah, by Bakersfield, and then uh, so I'll go over the City of Bakersfield project, and then once I've done that, I'll bring up a uh, Dignity Hill. So. All right, so we'll get started. Um, Bart Bakersfield is proposing a bike kitchen and bike share program. Um, key elements, you know, are you know, active transportation to help with transit access and overall health and well-being. This is in partnership with the, um, the Senior Center project. They're hoping to house it in that mixed-use facility. So, um, and, in, and then also in partnership with the Housing Authority for the housing. Um, so the location is at, you know, on that P Street and 4th loca uh, Street location. Uh, they propose an operating budget um, of um, seven, seven, about a little over 700000 and at this bike kitchen, they hope to offer um, a bike share program with electric and, and also large cargo um, bikes. Um, there'll also be a bike kitchen and earn a bike um, program where they add, they actually teach people how to maintain their bikes and they actually, actually by volunteering their time, they can actually earn a bike that they can use themselves. Um, they'll have, they have monthly workshops and educational events and activities after school programs and education, and then um, a fixed station. station, um, they're hoping to maybe, up, um, those will be uh, with a bike pump, those will be some infrastructure that may be not at the bike kitchen, but along the corridor where people can stop and do quick repairs uh, along the bike path. So um, these are just uh, some of the details about what their bike share will offer. Like they said they'll offer about 50 electric bikes, um, they also uh, offer subsidized um, use of the bike share for seniors at the senior center um, and for other low-income uh, residents. Um, and off obviously, these there'll be uh, free access for the maintenance and workshops at the kitchen. I also I think there'll be trained mechanics who will help you know teach people how to maintain um, and people uh, maintain their bikes and they also will do that maintenance if people aren't able to themselves. Okay. Uh, this is just, again, just more details on what they're going to offer, earn a bike program, uh, monthly workshops, and um, community events. Uh, the benefits and impacts. Um, well, this is just more, okay. So this is, again, just uh, more details on the code. This is the, you see the picture of some of the fix-it stations they can see you can do. It will be, you know, air ups and other things that you can install throughout the uh, bike corridors to help, um, to help um, riders get where they need to go in case something happens. Okay, and here's um, 
Basically, they will help achieve greenhouse gas by um, encouraging a culture of active transportation. Um, obviously, this re with less people, more people right-taking bikes, they obviously reduce uh, vehicle trips, um, reduce more healthier lifestyles, um, less traffic, um, better walking and biking opportunities. Um, with electric bike share, you can hopefully maybe save some money for some of the seniors. You know, it is cheaper to ride a bike than it is to ride in a car, so especially these gas prices. So, so you know, that's what we're um, hopefully that will be you know a real viable um, healthy option. Um, now we'll go into the city um, projects. Basically, the Mayor Linear Park expansion. Um, what we're thinking of doing, um, obviously, probably not a full-blown expansion at first, so it'll be in phases. The first phase would be tied to that senior center project. Um, so it would be basically from 4th to 6th Street, and then we'd be working our way north. It'd be a partnership between the city and Kern Delta Water District. Um, and it'll be, you know, hopefully we can continue some of the same model that you see north of California. Um, all the way from California south to Brunch Lane, so about a mile, a little over a mile. Um, um, some of the impacts of actually, you know, you connect, you'll connect more of the neighborhoods to, um, you know, you this will actually connect, you know, more of those south residential community up. They can actually take it all the way up through downtown. Um, so really, uh, you know, just broaden that community and the connection network. Um, it, you know, creates urban greening, uh, more uh, community gathering spaces. Um, you know, it also the shade trees um, and just make basically a more appealing environment um, than when you see a, just a, a irrigation dirt canal. Um, obviously, you know, the hope is as the canal moves up, they'll improve the crossings like you do, you see, hope, um, and do at grade street connections, um, pedestrian bridges um, to create those connections across the canal. Um, and great, great, really create a sense of place. It's also an opportunity to include public art, which we've done um, that you see examples of as well. Um, there's some pictures of that. Um, again, um, you know, just with the urban greening, you're, you know, you're capturing um, that carbon that you see, um, active lifestyles, and just increasing that outdoor, uh, active outdoor recreational activity. The next ones are very similar. Let's get, the, get it to stop double clicking. Okay. Uh, first one is the 4th Street uh, Active Transportation Corridor. It's currently a collector. Um, so these, this would be a corridor enhancement improvements between um, Chester and Martin Luther King. Um, what's great about this project is it really connects. Um, Caltrans is proposing some great enhancements on Union. The city, I'll talk about it, that's one of our last projects, is already fully funded a project to do enhancements along Chester. So, Forest Street will just provide that east-west um, connection for a full neighborhood kind of corridor enhancement. Um, so, you really see all of that. So, this is, this is the longest one. It's two miles. Um, and the, there, is t there is a fully TCC funding ask of about $1.2 um, these are just some of the things we hope to see actually improve neighborhood connection by providing that 4th Street enhancements and connecting it to the north-south. You improve that connection to the downtown and also south to 58. Um, also, we'll hopefully improve bus shelters, have bike racks and other amenities, and infill any missing sidewalks. Um, Obviously, increase bike and pet safety with some buffered bike lanes and charros. That's those charros. If you don't know, that's that painted bike symbol on the street, so people can see where they're supposed to go. Um, some bump outs and you know some more enhanced safety measures at crosswalks to help support that um, safe and walkable environment. Um, again. Pretty much all of these active transfers, I probably skipped through some of this because all of these have really have the same um, objectives and goals. Really encourages walkability, increased bike usage, and really create um, that shared sense of community. The next one is Martin Luther King Boulevard. Um, 
Again, very similar corridor enhancement. It's about a mile. We're looking to do from between California and Greenwich Lane. Don't have our proposed budget yet. We're trying to get it finished up. Um, but it'll have the same type of enhancements that I just um, spoke to at 4th Street. Again, infill sidewalks, improve with bus shelters, provide that um, better connection through the neighborhoods. Um, same um, kind of new city just updated its whole um, street gate design. So, so all of these streets will have a kind of a similar um, downtown street streetscape um, that we'll use um, to really enhance um, throughout the neighborhood. Again, same thing, just increasing safety measures, bump outs, and supporting walkable problems. And that's a that's a shallow, that little bike with an arrow. Um, again, same thing, curve walkability, same objectives. Um, the next one is F Street, kind of uh, urban greening. This project is, has more, more, you know, more, it's not as a wide a street because there's probably be more greening than, um, but they do have some crosswalk enhancements I think they're going to try to do. Um, I can't remember if it includes a bike lane or not, but, um, but improve, again, improve that neighborhood connection. F Street also provides that direct link to our new high speed rail station. So doing sidewalk repair, improve bus shelters, install trees and lighting to curb pressure usage. So this one is more about the kind of the walkable enhancements. Um, okay, there is bike lanes, bike lanes and bike lights to install as well, but I think it's probably not buffered. Um, and then improve crossings and do bulb outs and higher visibility crosswalks. So these are just some of the examples. Example pictures. Again, there's you know, that typical green, um, green separated bike lane. Again, this is, you know, encourages the multimodal use, um, reducing vehicle use, with more trees, um, hopefully you're having a more shade canopy to reduce uh, that UV exposure and just, again, have an active lifestyle. Um, this is that Chester project. This is one of our standalone leverage projects. So um, I'm hoping to add a few more of these with the Caltrans Union project as well, but um, this is just, again, it's between 4th and Brothers Lane to really provide that uh, connection to um, an enhancement throughout the community. So the city has this fully funded through the um, ATPT program, so um, they should be breaking, this is definitely one of our projects that will be breaking ground in the next year. Um, again, so you can see some of the design elements they've already completed with some buffered bike, separated bike lanes um, to improve that um, safety element and, cross and enhanced crosswalks. And also, it will do some landscape medians as well, kind of um, kind of mimicking what you see on Chester, north of California, also bringing that down uh, south of California. Um, again, so then we get greenhouse gas reductions. Um, Increasing um, active transportation and really creating a uh, sense of community. Oops. Yeah, well, now we have, I'll bring up Dignity Health to talk about 34th Street. Um, good evening. Thank you guys for allowing us to spend just a few moments. My name is Ken Keller. I'm the hospital president of Bakersfield Memorial Hospital. Um, this is Chris Meek, who's my partner in leading a lot of this concept and this um, work. The short version is Bakersfield Memorial is a valuable asset to the community. Uh, we benefit tremendously from the partnerships that we have with the city and with the community at large. Uh, we are pushing forward with a larger aspirational goal to revitalize 34th Street between Chester and Union. Part of that overarching goal is this revitalization project that we have in front of you, which is geared underneath the TCC plan, really focused on uh, transforming the corridor itself. And it's part of an investment that we've already made in a number of different ways. One example of which is the new uh, medical office building at Clinica Sierra Vista is located which with ourselves and partners was about a $32 million investment that we made to that corridor. We will partner with the city and others to continue other projects 
to supplement this revitalization. So I'm going to turn it over to Chris to talk specifics. Thank you, Ken. Um, as Ken mentioned, my name is Chris Mink. I'm with Quadnoff, uh, we're a local engineering and planning company here in town. And uh, when Ken came to us and, and talked about his vision, I thought, wow, this is a really great project for the city of Bakersfield. It's really great to see that, you know, we have 4th Street on the south, 34th Street on the north. It really kind of bounds this whole TCC area with some improvement projects. So real quick, I just wanted to go through a couple um, <clears throat> of the you know, pertinent facts about this project. It's an active transportation project. Um, it's, it's 34th Street between Chester Avenue and Union Avenue. It's about a mile long. Um, the TCC funding ask is $11.7 and the total funding uh, leverage is $4.2 million from the city of Bakersfield. So total project costs are about um, $16 million. <coughs> Cecilia, can I get the next slide? Um, no, no, there you go. Um, so <clears throat> when you think about a complete street project, think about Q Street, um, what's been done on Q Street or Chester Avenue. Uh, when you go north of Truxton up to the Garza Circle, that's a complete street project, right? So you have enhanced sidewalk, par or bike lanes, uh, parking areas, and then you have uh, median with um, some greening with uh, trees and other landscaping. Uh, that's, that's exactly what we're proposing here on the 34th Street Vitalization Project. Um, importantly uh, are the bulb outs. Bulb outs are what you see it typically at intersections. Um, it really enhances the walkability of a, of a neighborhood. Uh, it creates a much safer crossing for somebody who's crossing the street. There's a lot less of the, the frogger that you have to do getting, getting between the cars. And, um, you can kind of get out there and safely still be um, in the pedestrian space before uh, crossing the street. A little bit more about... Uh, on this slide, I really wanted to, to uh, emphasize the, the supporting the connection between the city plans. Um, 34th Street has been in the works for the city of Bakersfield for quite a long time. Uh, there's the Making Downtown Bakersfield plan, which is the high-speed rail plan. Uh, most of you probably know the high-speed rail actually sits right at the end of 34th Street. Uh, if you just cross over and you have Golden State right there, that's where the high-speed rail station would come in uh, if it gets built by, by the state. So this, this, this corridor really becomes an even more important corridor linking East Bakersfield to that high-speed rail station. Um, that plan, the, the high-speed rail plan, had a, um, a zero to 10 year strategy, and that strategy was adopted in 2018. So we're actually right in the middle of the zero to 10 year strategy, and so I think this is perfect timing for this project. Um, the project's also consistent with the downtown Bakersfield corridor enhancement master plan. And I think that was also what Cecilia was talking about with the 8th Street project as well. Those projects are complete street projects like this one. Oh, sorry. And then just on this slide, uh, this is the, the TCC objectives uh, for this project. There's really three key components, um, just like Cecilia mentioned with the other um, transportation projects, that really reduces greenhouse gas emissions. That's important when you do urban greening. Um, it enhances walkability, and then also it supports economic opportunity through the surrounding communities. Um, this is kind of a field of dreams. Uh, you build it and they will come kind of thing. So, uh, you know, it's, it really is the catalyst for development and redevelopment in an area, and that's what you see. These are expensive projects to do, but when you build them, you start to see that economic development take off. So, thank you. Now we have our last grouping of projects. Um, we have um, great alternatives to talk about a low-income residential solar program and uh, current community college district to talk about a community microgrid. Uh, Jesse, go for it. I think Greta's first. I guess that would be. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Jesse Alvin, and I work for Grid Alternatives. We are a nonprofit solar installer. Uh, we've been 
around and done a number of different installations in Kern uh, in partner with a number of diff different community-based organizations like Habitat for Humanity, uh, Kern Community College District. So uh, what we do is we provide solar access to low-income families that fall below the 80% median income uh, for the county in which they live. Um, we also uh, are currently about 70% done with a TCC project uh, in Fresno uh, that has been quite successful. And so what we're hoping to do is to really replicate that effort and that success that we've had uh, over in Fresno uh, and bring it to the community uh, here in Kern. So what, what we are proposing is we are proposing to install 40, uh, 40 solar systems uh, in the area uh, for families that uh, actually qualify. Now, in order to qualify for a solar system, uh, you do need to uh, own your home uh, and then also uh, meet the income criteria. Um, the, the overall budget that we're proposing is about $1.128 million, uh, which would basically uh, cover all the, uh, the costs for, for installations. Um, in Fresno, the, the average size system that we are installing uh, for our TCC is about uh, 4,500 watts. And so for, for current, uh, we're proposing to do 4,700 watts. Uh, and, and, and it's because we've learned one thing, is that with the older homes and the housing stock that's in the TCC area, not only here, but also in Fresno, uh, you have issues with uh, roofs that are substandard that will not uh, sustain the weight uh, and, and the wear that solar systems uh, bring. So, you know, we're, we're hoping to bring uh, uh, support and revenue uh, to fix the roofs. And then you also have a major problem with your electrical panels. Now, the electrical panels, a lot of them are probably 50 years old. And uh, so uh, they're kind of in need of... Uh, uh, of some upgrades in order to actually, uh, you know, be able to handle the additional wattage uh, that goes into uh, the system. So overall, you know, we, we think that it's, it's a good opportunity uh, because this project, the actual impacts uh, on it, uh, really have to do with the introduction of non-polluting technology on your roof, uh, which helps improve of the air quality. Uh, our initial greenhouse gas calculations uh, on this project uh, looking to reduce 2,679 tons of uh, greenhouse gases. Okay, uh, with that then, you know, one of the other overarching uh, goals of TCC is actually to help improve the air quality uh, to help lessen uh, the impact of bad air that has uh, really in impacted a lot of people that live in the area, especially if you have like asthma or some other respiratory condition that uh, that gets aggravated uh, with, with bad air. Okay, we're, we're also in uh, discussions with Kern Community College District to see how we might be able to incorporate the work that we are doing to provide training uh, for the trainees that uh, that, that are going through uh, current community college, uh, either getting uh, an electrical or a solar uh, uh, certification. And so overall, you know, we're, we're hoping that we might be able to help make a contribution uh, to make uh, current a better place to live. Thank you. Cecilia, does this mean I'm last? You're last. Okay, well then no one's voting for my project, because uh, I'm the people keeping, uh, person keeping everybody from going home. I'm Dave Teasdale, I'm the Executive Director of Economic and Workforce Development Programs at Kern Community College District, and I operate the 21st Century Energy Center in that role. And uh, our project is a, a microgrid project at the down, uh, downtown uh, Wild Institute location, and you can see it uh, it's kind of the bigger red dot there and where it falls in the uh, project area. 
Um, and uh, I probably quickly need to explain what a microgrid is. All a microgrid is is a system of controllers and computers that helps a, uh, a building or a customer maximize their use of energy. Uh, Bakersfield College is going to be putting solar covered parking over their uh, parking lot there, and this will help us maximize the benefit of uh, that. We expect our electricity usage to be reduced 91% and obviously the benefits of greenhouse gas reductions and emissions uh, from that. Um, but the other part of the microgrid is there's two aspects important to us. We are a community college, so we're about workforce development and community education. Um, and the microgrid is going to be a great living laboratory for our students as we're entering a new phase of energy in the state of California and in the country. It'll be an opportunity for them to get their hands on an actual working microgrid, understand what it is, see it in operation, look at the data, being able to learn from that data, be able to go out and work in this space. Microgrids are a, uh, an emerging space, and in, in our case, in a lot of cases, what they're used for is to be able, what they call island off of the utility, and be able to keep in operation uh, when there's a, a power shutoff. So one of the other things in our plan is we will be able to offer shelter in the event of a public safety power shutoff. I've seen a lot more power shutoffs in the last two years than I ever have before, and that's because they're trying to stop us burning down our, our forests and our mountains. Um, you guys might know it gets a little hot in the summer in Bakersfield. Uh, what, this idea came from our sister college out in Ridgecrest, Saracosa Community College, which was one of our three colleges. They had one of these power shutoffs when it was 117 out in Ridgecrest. That, that's unhealthy, that's dangerous pretty quickly. And so this will be uh, an opportunity for the community to come get uh, out of the heat, cool off, charge their cell phones, have internet access. You saw our location is right across from the downtown transit center, so it's very convenient with the improvements that, uh, that uh, Golden Empire Transit is looking to do. Um, and really our, our emphasis on this is workforce. We want this to be an opportunity for project area residents to work on these types of energy projects. You heard Jesse talk about uh, uh, plans to coordinate with, uh, with grid alternatives. We've uh, partnered many times in the past. We'd love to work with Habitat for Humanity and do uh, get some hands-on experience for our students. We're already talking to Cap K. I think we have a meeting next Tuesday, right, Pritika? <laughs> so, uh, really, what this is is an opportunity to be a center that stays operational with critical functions in a power shutoff, but also serves an educational purpose and has a tremendous greenhouse gas savings and emissions savings. So, I'm happy to answer any questions afterwards. I'm no longer in the way between whatever your plans are after this. Thanks. <laughs> Team, I mean, everybody is incredible. And, yeah. So I, I'll just let yeah, anybody have questions, and then I guess whoever's relevant can maybe pop up and answer it if it's relevant to your project. But any questions? No? You guys are making it too easy. <laughs> Emma, I know you have a project. I know you have a question now. <laughs> So, did you hear her, Ricardo? Yeah. Okay. She, she, I'll just clarify just so everybody can hear. She asked if the the expanded micro transit on demand augmentation, micro transit augmentation is going to be if the if the the reduced prices would be offered to just residents and the TCC. Yeah, we want to partner with folks like Baker Community Center and Cat Cave, have them be the people that can be offered. Um, and when we think about displacement, we're probably only thinking about folks who are living in a house, but these folks would also experience displacement if um, this project was to move forward. What kind of thought have y'all given to the folks who currently live in that area? 
Are there any partnerships already being discussed to ensure the folks are going to be um, provided shelter during the time, or how, how does that look like? The Downtown Transit Center. Okay. We, so we typically try to connect um, folks that don't have a home with services like Bakersfield Homeless Center or the Navigation Center. Um, so we'll do the same thing with that, and we wouldn't want to displace anyone, obviously, but we want to connect them with resources rather than trying to move them somewhere else. Okay. Is there any opportunity for an established commitment before um, including the including this project in the application if it does get to that point? So unfortunately, I'm not authorized to make that decision. We have to bring that to our get leadership. But okay. Yeah, I can get back to you on that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any other? Oh. I just had a quick question about the Mill Creek expansion. Um, did you say that Kern Delta was on board with doing that already? We've had some calls. It's very, very preliminary. They said, you know, they're open to a lot of discussions. Uh, a lot of conversations that need to be had. You know, there's, you know, there's easements and there's right away and there's, you know, there's a lot of things that need to happen. You know, the first one took about five or six years. So that's why in this one we're just proposing associated with the senior center project just to kind of get it started. Because what's great about that, just that connection to Fourth and Sixth Street, is it the district already owns all of. The, sometimes their canal is just an easement on somebody else's property. Right. In this case, they actually own all the property in their easement, so it's you know less burdensome um, to make that at least start with that connection, and then we can kind of work, and then and then seniors kind of have. You know that kind of walkable area that needs to right because it's really the senior, it's really the bulk of it is the senior center property. There's probably just one more property north of them to make that six street connection. So it's pretty doable just for that for kind of that first phase. And they we have some, some talks to the district, but we do have to do you know our maintenance plan and our all our stuff that we just did with the for both the other one. So yeah, thank you. Uh, for the 34th Street project, can you remind me what the TCC funding ask is? And what how much? For 34th, what was your funding ask? It was 11 million? About 11.7 million. 11.7? .7. And then the leverage yes. amount is how much? 4.2. 4.2. Okay. Um, I think that's another one of my, my, my concerns. Um, currently, you know, I think the, the medical facilities are, are the main faci facilities in the area. Um, and the transportation improvements are hopefully going to bring a lot of economic development as you mentioned but um, have you all given any thought to the the risk of displacement to the residents who live there um, is there any um, considerations in terms of having residents be um, you know targeting those neighborhoods to ensure that those folks can also work in that area type of thing or yeah any any thoughts on that piece Question is if I can rephrase, make sure I said it correctly. Have we given thought to the potential displacement and the impact of the vulnerable populations within there? The answer is yes. Uh, this project will improve access because the transportation along 34th Street will significantly be improved. It also improves the walkability. We do have a lot of people that uh, walk up and down 34th Street to come to the hospital. Uh, we will not be displacing any homeless. If we do, we work with the uh, Bakersfield Homeless Center as well as the collaborative as a whole. Uh, and so what this will do, in addition to the other benefits, will improve access to care at Memorial Hospital for the populations right around the 34th Street corner. So we think it's going to absolutely benefit the community as a whole. Okay, thank you. Any, any partnerships that y'all are currently working on to ensure that that actually that it comes to life? Uh, but the question of partnerships is we have a number of discussions with the city, with other political, with other third party developers on a number of different projects to enhance what's going on 34th Street. And this revitalization project is just simply one of a number of things we have um, currently working on. Okay, thank you. you bet. Um, and then on the city side, um, are there any? affordable housing projects that are currently underway that can supplement this potential project? Um, 
Jason's max me on that one. Um, we have about, I know we have close to 300 units that are um, uh, funded. Some are already on construction. There's the 6th Street. Um, there's also, um, we just released our latest NOFA, and uh, it includes, gosh, I know, oh, I can't remember the amount, but it includes ARPA dollars, it includes our new affordable housing trust fund where we got three million dollars and there's probably close to oh, close to 45 million dollars of funding for uh, affordable housing projects that just that's an opportunity that NOFA just got released i believe um, on friday so um uh, you know obviously um, i can't remember what's all on construction but i think if you look at our affordable housing strategy webpage, there's some updates on active um, projects that are currently underway i believe there's some project summaries on there. You can get more information on this. Through the city's economic community development, there's a housing affordable housing strategy webpage. There's a lot of information there. Okay, thank you. Anything else? I want to do a plug. For those of you who don't know, the uh, city of Bakersfield has a general plan update. So all these things you're talking about, they want to know about it. It's a different department. Called Bakersfield 2045. They have a website. Actually, tonight they have a meeting. Yeah, online meeting. Yeah. So that's where everybody's at. Yeah. <laughs> I recommend if you want to get more involved, attend the meeting. Some are in person and some are by Zoom. I'll just yeah, I'll just repeat that so everybody can hear. Um, yeah, this was just announcing that the city's going through a general plan update. So um, if those don't know that, that's our long-term kind of planning document, vision document, and you know addresses housing. Circulation, kind of everything we're doing, talking about here, just on a much, much bigger scale rather than a focused neighborhood scale. So, yeah, everybody just needs to participate in that. And they're, they're just doing, um, I think they just announced that, uh, uh, their next in person community meeting will be at the Friendship House. Yeah. So, it's on their website, the Bakersfield 2045. So, yeah, 22nd. Yeah, the 22nd. Yeah. We good? All right, I think we're good. Well, you know, a lot of us can hang out. Anybody else that has questions, I think we'll wrap it up. And I'll thank all of our amazing partners. I think hopefully we can, you know, get scrambled these last few weeks and, and get everything in that we need to hear. All right. thank you.